Good morning and welcome to this free tour of Google Hangouts. My name is Melani MacDonald. My website is MelaniMacDonald.com. As you can see on my lower third, one of the things that we'll be talking about in this Hangout. So, have either of you participated in Hangouts previously or is this your first one? You can type or you can speak, whichever you like. Your first one? Awesome. Okay. Oh, first one. Wonderful. Well, mm. thank you for coming in. I feel uh, really mm. honored when I get people in for their first time. It makes me feel like they think they can be comfortable with me, and that's what I want them to feel. So, yay. Okay, well, we are inside a Hangout. There are two types of Hangouts. There are private Hangouts, which this one is, and there are Hangouts on Air, which are Hangouts which are publicly broadcast live on YouTube. So they are streamed live while they're happening, and that's a Hangout on Air. After the Hangout on Air is finished, it is automatically archived to your YouTube channel, and you can then go in and adjust your settings. You can make it private, or you can make it public, or you can make it unlisted. Private means only the people you invite will be able to view it. Public means anybody can view it, and it shows up in search. If people are searching for your video, they can find it, or searching for your name, they can find it. Unlisted means it is not found in search. It's not listed in search. However, it can be viewed by anybody who has the link. With a private video, you have to have a Google account and you have to be invited to view the video by the owner of the video. But with an unlisted video, you don't have to have a Google account, just like any other video on YouTube, anybody can watch it, but they do have to have the URL. They won't find it in search, but you can put it on your website, you can post it to your members areas if you want to keep it kind of private, and you can give it to them. So then they can come in and watch it. So that's just a little bit of background about what Hangouts are. Hangouts are really wonderful because they open up a lot of opportunities for marketing and promoting your business. As an example, what we're doing today, I'm giving a free tour of Google Hangouts that promotes me, that introduces me to audiences, and introduces my services because I give a lot of classes through Google Hangouts. So today, we are going to take a tour of the inside of the Hangout. Now, the first thing is that if your icons are not showing up on your screen, move your mouse around. They tend to auto-hide if you're not using them, and that's kind of a nice thing. Uh, but when you move your mouse around, you'll see the icons. So we'll begin with the icons up at the top. At the top, the first one you see in the center there is a little person with a plus. Go ahead and click on that. This is how you invite more people to join the Hangout. So you get this little box that says add people to the video call. You can add people by their circle, your circles. You can invite an entire circle. You can invite by name. And if you are connected to them on Google+, or they're on Google+, just like when you're typing in their name, their little box will pop up. Or you can invite by an email address. So even if they're not on Google, you can invite them by their email address. They will get an email that says they're invited to this Hangout, but then they'll be prompted to create their Google account so that they can join it. So you add in the people that you want to invite, and you click Submit. And if you would like to invite anybody, please feel free. The other thing that you'll notice in that box underneath there's a little link that says Add Telephone. So you can actually use Hangouts to make conference calls. You don't have to do a video call necessarily. If you want to call somebody where they're just receiving a regular phone call like any other phone call, you click on this Add Telephone, then you enter the number and press Call, and they will get a phone call. Now when they come in as a phone call, you see those little icons down at the bottom of the screen there that are the small icons of everybody in there. Someone on a phone call 
their little icon will just show the first few numbers of their phone number. So the other people in the Hangout won't see the whole phone number. They do protect your privacy that way, but that's how they know that this person is on just via a phone. So I could add several people by phone if I wanted to do a phone conference. Now personally, I like the face-to-face -face video. I think that brings a lot more warmth and a lot more ability to connect people than you get with just voice calls, but there's a lot of ways to use it. Everybody thinks of using Hangouts for marketing and promotions by doing marketing videos or product demonstrations, but I'll give you an example. Another person who came into my Hangout before, she is a medical transcriptionist and she has an assistant work with her. Now what they do is they start a Hangout face to face because with Hangouts you can also share documents on screen. So when they need to call a patient and interview them to get all their medical information for the doctors, what they'll do is they'll bring up the document on screen so the assistant and the medical transcriptionist can both see it. Then they will use the phone feature to call the patient. While the transcriptionist is interviewing the patient, her assistant is filling out the paperwork. However, the transcriptionist can actually look at the document as the assistant is filling it out. So those two are looking at something on screen, but they're interviewing their patient. And that has nothing to do with marketing, but it solved a need for that business because they had no other way to do this. Okay. The second icon over is a little microphone, and that is the mute button. If I press this microphone, you can see that I'm muted in my little box below. You can see that I get muted in the little box below. A little red microphone popped up and you couldn't hear me talking, so I muted myself. You can mute yourself, but to mute other people, you have to use a tool, which we'll get into a little bit later as we go down the apps on the sidebar. So from this top one, this is to mute yourself only and unmute yourself. The same for the camera icon next to it, that controls your video. If you click on that to turn your camera off, if you're going to step away, that's the best way to do it because then your profile picture shows up. Whereas if you just step away, they might be looking at an empty background, it's not as pleasing. So it's nice if you're going to step away to use the camera icon. Hi Martin, thank you for joining us. Just need to let you know before we continue that I am recording this session. I'm using a third uh, party software, so it's not a Hangout on Air. And I plan to be using this on my website. So please go ahead and put in the chat box that you give your permission to be recorded. To get to the chat box, click on the blue icon on the left hand side of your screen. It's blue and it has some white lines in it and that will open the check box. We are going over the icons at the top of the page and I will continue. The next icon over is a bandwidth. It looks like your little bars on your cell phones. This is really useful especially for people in um, third world countries where they don't have really good connections or if somebody has a slow internet connection and they can't keep up with the video. You can select your slider here and slide it down to the left to decrease the bandwidth of your video. And as you see, the video gets a little pixelated, a little blurry, you don't see it as much. However, that's better than being unable to participate because you can't handle the video stream. So if you need to, you can even slide it to the end. And again, that's like turning off your camera, um, but it limits your bandwidth usage and allows people to participate who might not otherwise be able to. Okay. Next to that, we have the gears icon. The gear icon is pretty universal throughout Google properties, such as Google search, Google maps, your Google plus profile, the little gear takes you to your settings. So if you click on the gear, you get to your settings and you have three fields, one for your camera, one for your microphone, and one for your speakers. So 
One of the first places you can check if you're having problems being uh, heard or being seen, you can just choose one of these other uh, selections in there and see if that works. And the next icon over, don't press it, just look at it. It's a little red phone piece and that's how you exit the Hangout when ready to leave. Over in the right corner, there's a nifty new feature, pretty new. It says Enhanced. And what that does is give you a, a few choices for your video stream. A lot of people like the smooth. This is the smooth and you can see it kind of evens out the skin tones and the lighting. If your lighting is a little weird or harsh uh, or you're having a bad skin day, that's a nice one to use. You can do a focus, which you see sort of blurs out the, the sides. Let's see. But my face, the center still stays in focus. Brighten, if they're in a very dark room, you can brighten it up. A spotlight is kind of nice. It puts the light on the center and again gets rid of the stuff in the background. And so if you have a messy background, you haven't put some nice curtains up, that's one way to kind of lessen the impact of the background. Warm, black and white, which is kind of fun, and original. Okay, so those are just some nice visual choices they give us to, to make it a more pleasant experience. Bill, you asked where is the option? Which option is that? Oh, okay, or for the, uh, it's on the upper right hand side of your screen. There should be a little box that says, probably it says original, where it looks like a little magic pencil. Let me know if you guys see it. No? Hmm. Now I wonder if that's just because I'm the host. I haven't joined a hangout where I was a guest in a little while, to be honest. So maybe because I was the host. I don't think so. But I will find out because I will be joining a hangout this afternoon later on, and I will look for that then and let you all know. Okay, so. When you join a Hangout, look for it, in the, I mean, when you create a Hangout, look for it in the upper right corner. Okay. Any other questions right now? No? Okay. On, on the left-hand side, you'll see a row of a column of icons, and these are the apps that can be used within the Hangout. Now, the Hangout is an app itself. So when people say turn on your Hangouts or go into your Hangouts, when you're on your Google Plus profile, look in the upper right of the page for a little green apostrophe mark symbol. Click on that and that opens your Hangouts window. And what that does is basically it gives you a pop-up chat box, sort of like the one you see on Facebook, that shows you who's online and who you can start a conversation with, or you can just type in a name to start in a conversation with somebody. So this Hangout is an app, but within the Hangout, there are other apps that can be used. You already have the chat one down. That's at the top. It's this blue box, and it opens the chat box on the right where you can type in your questions and your answers. Below that, we have something called Screen Share. And I really love Screen Share because it's very handy when doing a presentation. So for example, if I wanted to give a slideshow presentation, normally I will export it to a PDF and then I'll open the PDF and then I will share my screen of that PDF document. I'm going to do a screen share right now. I click on it and if you want to follow along, please do. You can click on that. When you click on screen share, it opens a little pop-up window that shows you the different choices of what you have open on your desktop. So if it says desktop or if it says everything, I forget what it says on a PC. It doesn't say desktop, it says something else. I think it means whole background or something like that. But that's going to show your entire desktop and all your programs and everything that you have open. 
you can see that example now. You see my Hangout screen, which is telescoping there, but if I move that out of the way now, you can see my browser window, and you can see my whole desktop. That's a great choice if you want to show a few things at a different time. Generally speaking, I don't like to share the whole desktop. I like to share just the document I want to share with them. So I'm going to click on Screen Share again. And this time, I'm going to choose only my browser. And now, when I'm sharing my screen, you don't see the whole desktop. You see only my browser. So if I am giving classes on how to use Google+, for example, or how to do anything, I can just go right to my browser, and I can show them where I am on the screen. I can show them what button I want them to pu uh, push or what link I want them to click or how exactly to do something. And that makes it very, very easy to give a class. It's also quite nice because then if the, the person taking the class has a question and is trying to figure out how to do something, they can share their screen and show you exactly what they're doing and exactly what their question is about. So it's a really, really helpful tool, one of the ones I use the most and the biggest reason that I came over to Hangouts originally from Skype. Okay. Now below that, and if you don't see any of these icons that I'm talking about in your list, it's because you have not installed the app yet. However, once somebody else inside the Hangout uses that app, you'll get a little pop-up or you'll get a little message that says, so-and-so is using this app, would you like to install it? And then you can go ahead and install it too. So the next one down in my list is Capture. It's a little camera icon. I turned it on and you should be getting a little notification that I turned on Capture. Or if you haven't had this app installed yet, you'll be asked to install it. Now what you see is this little camera icon at the bottom of the screen. If you don't see that, go ahead and click on your Capture icon too because one of the wonderful things about this is that they built in automatic privacy protections. Anybody who did not turn on their capture doesn't show up in the photos. So we've all got capture turned on now and we can take a photo. So I'm going to smile and there's the photo. On the bottom right, you see a little icon that shows some photos, and if you click on that, the sidebar opens and shows you the photos that are being taken inside the Hangout. And at this time, I wanted to take a little moment to get on the soapbox and talk about smiling. One of the biggest things to remember is to try to remember to smile throughout your presentations. And you never know when somebody else is taking a screenshot. They may not use Capture. Maybe they're just going to take a desktop picture because they don't know about Capture. So you don't always get the warning, no matter how, how much your privacy uh, safeties are built in. You, you, you just never know. So try to remember to smile. I learned this the hard way after giving a presentation somewhere and somebody took some pictures for me and I came back and looked through them all and I was like not smiling in any of them and it makes a huge difference. Okay, any questions so far to turn it off again? Just click on the button, toggle on and off. And no questions, okay. How do you turn capture off? Just, just uh, click the button again. Everything is click it to turn it on, click it to turn it off. So it's all toggling. Welcome back, Martin. Underneath that, I have a brand new one that just showed up when I opened the Hangout this morning. It's called Soundation Studio. And I'm going to click on that so that if you don't have it, you can go ahead and load it. Now what this is, is a sound and music creation app 
so that you can get together with your friends in a hangout and make some music. We are not going to go over how to do that because this is just a, a tour of what you can do. And as I said, it just showed up when I started this hangout this morning. So I haven't played with it yet, but I'm super excited and looking forward to playing with it. I'm going to click that again to turn it off. And below that is Hangout Toolbox. It looks like a little red toolbox with some tools in it. This is probably the single most used app in Hangouts. This toolbox feature is what gives me this little strip below my name. This is called Hangout Lower Third. So you can do some branding with it. You can put your website on there, your name on there, your logo. So click on Hangout Toolbox and it will open on the right hand side the area to work within the toolbox. The very first icon at the top in that Hangout Toolbox area on the right is a head with a circle in it. That's your lower third. So click on that. And if you don't mind, I'd like you to turn your cameras on. Those of you who don't mind being on camera because we're going to have you turn on your lower thirds. Okay, so when you open lower third, the first field under lower third is populated automatically with your name. Underneath that, you can put your website or a tagline or whatever promo you want to do. You can choose the color of the lower third, and you can choose a file for your logo. That logo image will show up where you see my headshot down on mine. Then, after you have filled those fields out and chosen your colors, slide the slider from off to on, and you will have a lower third. camera. That's fine, Erin, uh, but you can just watch along, and if you want to watch the video playback later, you'll see it from my end. Okay, so let's show Martin. He's turned his on, and this is what the built-in lower third looks like. So if you don't have a logo, it's a great idea to use your profile picture like Martin has and like I've done. And especially if you are a solopreneur and your brand is yourself, it's always good to include your headshot. Now, mine, you may notice, doesn't look like the built-in that Martin has. I used the custom overlay. Underneath the lower third, you'll see an option called custom overlay. And if you have Photoshop and you, can, and you know how to work in it, you can make yourself a file. Save it as a PNG so that you have... Uh, your your alpha knockout and that way your file shows your face your video with just your lower third on the bottom if anybody would like a template for the custom overlay in Photoshop send me a private message on Google Plus and I will be happy to send it to you you can save your lower third as a preset by typing in a name for your preset and pressing save. Then when you go into lower third next time, you have a choice of presets that you can just click on the little check mark and it will turn it on automatically. So I have one for my TGIF, Business Networking Hangout Show, and I have one for my Hangouts and I can easily and quickly go between which uh, custom overlay I want to use by saving it as a preset. Okay, any questions so far? Can you send a private message within a Hangout? You cannot send a private message within a Hangout build, but what you would do is just use the Hangouts app and use it as a chat message. And that chat message will pop up on your screen. If you're familiar with Facebook at all and you know they have that chat little chat bar and you click on someone you can send a chat message so you can private chat message with anybody on Google Plus using the Hangouts app after you turn it on okay but not within a Hangout okay the next tool down is just for fun this is the Google effects tool
So the Google Effects tool is, is a lot of fun, especially for new users or people who are just hanging out for fun with their families, doing a family reunion or with their friends. And when you open Google Effects on the right hand side, again, it opens a box and you can put on nifty little hats. My tiara is my favorite, of course. They give you headwear, they give you eyewear, they give you facial hair. So I know that it's uh, Movember. I can, I can do my Movember thing if I want to. They give you a few props and they give you some sounds too. So if you are doing a show and you have a guest and they give some really good advice, you can give them the drum roll and the clap. And these are really nifty because people are creating their own shows by using Hangouts on Air so that they hang out as streamed live. They're doing effects, they're using sound effects, <laughs> laugh tracks, just opens up a lot of possibilities. They've even given us a few fun backgrounds to play with. So if your background is yucky, you can use one of their background images. And it's a little it's a little bit funky because you get this sort of ghostly image, but that's kind of fun too. Okay, so let me turn off my tiara. <laughs> and check the chat for any questions. Okay. Yes, funny. All right, underneath that we have something called comment tracker. Now, comment tracker is built into the Hangout toolbox too, but According to the Hangout helper, the Hangout guru himself, Ronnie Bincer, over on Google+, the comment tracker within the toolbox doesn't really work correctly when you use it by yourself. So what he says is open your Hangout toolbox first, get all your settings done in Hangout toolbox, and then go to comment tracker and turn comment tracker on. And what Comment Tracker does is you can put, if you, if you create an event or you're doing a Hangout, and this is a live Hangout on Air, and you share the link to the URL for the YouTube uh, video where everybody can watch the Hangout, you can put that link into this box here and add it to Comment Tracker. And what it does is brings the comments from those posts into the Hangout. So in other words, the way it's supposed to work is, let's say I'm doing a Hangout on Air and I share it on Google+. I take the URL from that post on Google+, I enter it into this comment tracker. Then anybody who comments on that post, because they're watching the video there, that comment will be brought into this box on this screen. Now I'm not using it today because this is a private hangout, so I'm not like posting it around. I'm not taking comments and questions. But if it was a hangout on air and I was doing a show, I would take all my links that I posted around. I would add them to my comment tracker and try to keep track of any comments and questions that come in so that we can address them. And I apologize, I was a little remiss on the Google Hangout Toolbox. There were a few more things to show you in there. So we're going to go back to Hangout Toolbox. I should have done that first before we went to Comment Tracker. But that's okay, we can go back. So now, back in the Hangout Toolbox, on the right-hand side, after the lower third, I, I kind of forget to do the rest because lower third is really the only thing I use. But next to it, you have your speaker. And that is where you can control the volume for what you hear from other guests within the Hangout. So when I click on that little speaker, I have a list that shows Aaron and Bill and Brian and Martin all in my list. And I have a slider so I can make you either lower or louder. That way, if somebody's really loud and their stuff is overtaking everything else, I can turn them down. Next to our volume control, we have a smiley face that's grayed out. I've never been able to use it. I don't know what it is. 
Next to that one is the comment tracker that's built into the Hangout toolbox. But as I said, I've been following Ronnie's advice. I don't use this comment tracker within Hangout toolbox yet. Although I'm sure that the kinks will be worked out because the developers of this Hangout toolbox app are just awesome. And if you want to know who those developers are, click on that question mark and you get the credits here. Again, the gear symbol is settings, so there are a few settings there. You can mute your notification sounds. You can auto load last use lower third. Uh, a couple settings just to make it easier. Okay, so that's it for Hangout Toolbox. Let me go back to chat. If anybody has any questions, you feel free to pipe in or type it in chat. Martin, you asked, is Comment Tracker only for the presenter? Generally speaking, I believe Comment Tracker is for the host to open, but I believe other people can see it too because once it's opened and, and the comments are coming in, I have had experiences where I've had an assistant say, oh, you got a question from here, you got a question from here. So yes, the other people can see it. Okay, any other questions so far? Okay. Brian, I think you dropped out at the part where I explained that I am recording this Hangout through a third party session and I will be using it on my website. If you would, Brian, please just type in the chat box that we have your permission to be recorded. I'm still trying to figure out how to get to the chat box, so uh, guide me. On the left-hand side, in those icons, yep. there's a blue one. It looks like a chat bubble with some white lines in it. Click uh, on that, yeah. and it opens the chat on the right side. Okay. You can just say it, though. If you, if you don't want to chat, you can just say, I have permission, because <laughs> I'm recording. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Continuing on then, no more questions yet, so we are going to continue on with the apps. Now on the left hand side, if you don't see these apps listed, there's three little dots and you can hover over those three little dots, it'll open another column where more apps could be listed. The next one is YouTube. And this is really handy if you're doing a presentation and you have a YouTube video that you would like to present to the other people in your Hangout, you can use this app to present it. Everybody click on that YouTube app so that you have the window open. You'll see a window where it will show the playback area for the video and you'll also see a list. To add a video to the playlist, oops, let me get to my videos first real quick. So I have a URL handy. Okay. So here's my video URL. I'm going to click on Add Videos to Playlist. I'm going to paste the URL from YouTube into that playlist. And you'll see it pop up in my list. So I could add as many videos in there if I wanted to. So for, oh, I'm muted. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was muted. Uh, I'm your host, Melanie McDonald. You can see and the today we have a to very play. special episode. And I can press this green button underneath that allows me to talk over the video while the video is still playing. So if your video is, say, a slideshow presentation, it's going on, it's showing some animations, and you want to talk about it and explain it, you press this little button and you can talk over the video while it's still playing. You can pause the video if you want to pause and talk about something in depth. And then any other videos you want to add, you can add here. Any questions so far about the YouTube? Okay, I'm going to move on then. Again, clicking once. Melanie? Yes? When I clicked, I saw the YouTube 
thing come up and it said use app and I clicked it and nothing new happened as far as I know. So let me see. Okay. Maybe it popped another window. Nope, I don't see. No other window opened on my okay. computer, so I don't know what happened. Ma do you have those three little dots in your um, icon, your apps list? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's so noisy here, I'm not going to be able to have this conversation, so I'm just going to mute out and listen. Okay. Let me, I'm going to put something in chat for you, Brian. Look, look for three dots in apps list on left. Mouse over those to get more apps. Okay. And you may have to install. Okay. So, if you don't have an app and you don't see it, when you mouse over those three dots in that uh, extra little column, one of your choices is add apps. Click on Add Apps, and you'll be presented with a bunch of different apps that can be used within a Hangout. YouTube is one of them. You can click on that, and you can add it that way. So not if you can hear me, Brian, if you're hearing what I'm saying. Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. All right, so do you need uh, another minute to do the YouTube one, or shall we go on, Brian? Okay, so I'm going to once again click the YouTube app symbol to turn it off because toggling turns things on and off. And the next app we have is Google Drive. I use this one quite a lot actually. So if you don't have it, go ahead and install it. How many of you are using Google Drive? Show of hands or type something in the chat box if you're if you're not on video. Okay, Brian is using it. Awesome. This is one of, okay, and Bill says yes too. Okay, this is one of the most handy tools within a Hangout. I use this when I am meeting, as an example, I am on a, a, a group of individuals that uh, we work on an education project. Now we're all in different cities, and so before Hangouts, we used to have to drive about an hour each way to a central location for our meetings. Now we can meet through Hangout, it cuts out an hour of driving there and the hour of driving back, and we don't even have to leave our homes or offices. When we want to collaborate on a document, we open the drive. When I open the drive, the screen now shows my drive with a list of documents that I have in my drive. If I want to create a new, a new document for all of us to collaborate on, there is a button at the top that says Create Shared Notes, and there's another one that says Create Shared Sketchpad, and I love both of these. So if I click on Create Shared Notes, I get a little box that says Show Your Email Address because it lets people know that anybody in the Hangout is going to have access to this document and that we're all going to see each other's email addresses. I'm cool with that, so I'm clicking open. And now there is a Google document showing in our main screen. And what I'd like you all to do is to, is to go in, type something in there. Because the cool, one of the coolest things about these collaborative documents is that everybody can add to it. So uh, Brian, if you're seeing it, or Martin, or Bill, or Aaron, anybody, go ahead and type in there. So great. Now you can see as we're typing in, everybody's got a different color cursor and their name pops up. So we can see who's typing something. And this is really, really handy when you have a work group or a project team working on a project. You don't necessarily live in the same cities you can connect long distance and have a planning meeting and take your notes and put everything down and it's really awesome. And then this document will be on Google Drive and everybody will have access to it. Okay, I am going to, now if you notice, to the left hand side there is a little icon that says Hangout Notes. 
and above it there's a little folder. This is my entry. Great, everybody typed in. Click on the little folder. It's a little gray folder with a little sort of person cut out. No, it's not letting me click on it. Take it back. So just click on the blue, blue document again. Sorry. <laughs> Brian, I was seeing you as purple. Now clicking on that document again, uh, or, or on the drive icon, closes it. I'm actually trying to get back to where I can start a... Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading all your stuff. I'm trying to get back to where I can start a sketch document. So I'm actually going to click on the drive document again. Uh, the drive icon that closes it. I'm going to click it again to open it again, and hopefully it'll take me out to the beginning. It's not. Okay. At the very, very top, on that little sidebar where you have your hangout notes in the folder, at the very, very top, there's another thing you can click on. Click on that, and that's how I'm getting back to create shared notes and create shared sketch pad. I think that changed a little bit since the last time I was doing this, so forgive my little spurts there, but uh, you never know, things change a lot in here. So this time I'm going to create a shared sketch pad. And hopefully you're all following along, just type in chat if you're not, or, or go ahead and speak and pipe up and let me know. I love the sketch pad because I'm a very visual person. I'm not so much about charts and percentages and numbers and typed out outlines. I love to see things visually presented. I actually use the sketch pad a lot to make sort of mind, ma mind map type things. And I don't know if you're familiar with the mind map, but it's just a, a more visual way of sketching things out. So you can draw different items, you can make connections, you can do all kinds of stuff. Again, just a very handy planning tool and fun tool. Now, I'm going to go back out, click on the drive icon, that triangle, that green, blue, and yellow, and that turns everything off and brings us back into the Hangout. Are we all okay so far following along? You can nod, put yes in the... Okay, great. Everybody's following along. Wonderful. Okay. The next app is something, this is the last one I'm going to go over. This is something called Business Hangouts. And this is really interesting. This is a third party thing that was developed by somebody who saw the potential in uh, Hangouts. And he created a program that allows you to schedule a Hangout and invite people to join in the chat from LinkedIn, from Facebook. If they don't have a Google Plus account and you want them to participate by chatting and asking questions, you can use this, uh, this tool, the Business Hangouts, and create a Hangout using their planned Hangout schedule. And what it does is it creates a website address that people go to where they can interact with this. And so it allows you to interact through chat with people on other networks such as LinkedIn and Facebook from within a Hangout. Now, only people who are on Google can come into the Hangout because you have to have a Google account. But it's a great way to kind of just do a webinar style of Hangout where other people can join in and ask questions. Okay, I'm going to click on that again to close it. And once again, the last thing we'll go over is there's a little Add Apps button there. Click on that and there are just tons and tons of apps that you can use from within a Hangout. You can use SlideShare, uh, A Story Before Bed, Coco and Scoot and Doodle are just little sort of drawing applications. So there's a lot of different things you can use. I don't use any of the other ones. I just took you through the ones that I've used the most as a host of a uh, show that I do twice a month called the TGIF Business Networking Hangout on Google Plus. 
now we see a little we see a little glitch here. I turned off the business hangouts and yet I'm still getting some business hangout stuff in my window. So let's see if I can turn that off again. Leave left. Okay, so well, looks like I'm going to be stuck with those till the end. <laughs> Again, you just have to be able to uh, handle some of these glitches that come up sometime. Last 10 minutes of the class is for Q&A. So if you are, okay, Martin's got to run. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for joining in. We'll see you next time. Uh, if you don't mind turning your camera and mic on. Bill would love to chat to you face to face. I know Aaron you're without so I will keep the chat bar open and Brian joined us again. Thanks Brian. Brian I was just saying that these last uh, 10 minutes are for Q&A so if you have any questions please go ahead and ask them. Also since I am going to be hosting this on my website if you'd like to introduce yourself give a little promo for your biz. I welcome you to do that. Uh, let me know if you'd like to do that and you'll have the opportunity. Bill, how is the class? Uh, very good. Um, this is my first hangout, so I hope I, everything went all right. <laughs> I think it went fine. Do you have any more questions so far? Yeah, you said you were recording be your third-party app. I was just wondering, could you share what that app was? Sure. Brian, I'm going to ask you to mute yourself just for a minute because we are hearing a lot of your background uh, question, but then when you're ready to talk, go ahead and unmute yourself. Bill asked what third-party software I'm using. I'm on Mac, and so I'm using an app called ScreenFlow. And it's available on the App Store for $99. ScreenFlow, one word. That allows me to record my desktop. So it will record my entire desktop. And then uh, when it's done, what I do is I go in, I crop it down to just the Hangout, or I leave it on the desktop because sometimes if I'm showing how to do something, for example, I was showing the desktop, if I need the whole desktop showing, I'll leave it all showing. But it's a pretty good um, third-party software that enables me to record private Hangouts and other private meetings. Oh, I you. usually then take that recording from ScreenFlow and then I pull it into iMovie because there's some things that I can do in ScreenFlow and some things that I can do in iMovie. Okay. Brian, did you have any questions? Looks like he's talking to somebody there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bill, would you like to give yourself a little intro to your, for yourself in your biz? Oh, sure. Um, right now I'm working on proximity marketing in downtown Palm Springs called inroomdeals.com, in which, yes, which pushes uh, event and ad marketing to people's cell phones via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi oh, without an app. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll have to come <laughs> on the TGIF Business Network and hang out and tell us about it sometime. I'd be happy to know that I had everything running because last week I, my camera, I had an old camera that wouldn't interface with this, so that's why I had to go out and get a new camera. Okay. Oh, well, I'm glad you joined us this week. Thanks for hanging in there and coming back. No, I definitely enjoyed it and definitely come back. Brian, I see you, your shuttle driver is there, so uh, any last words before you'd like to leave? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Remember to unmute yourself. Okay. First of all, sorry about all the background noise, but it's good now. Actually, we I don't hear any background. I just hear you. <laughs> okay. I'm at the Nissan dealership getting my car fixed, so that's why when um, when I was first with you, I was on my cell phone, which was kind of cool, and then I got a phone call, which cut me off. So anyway, <laughs> what I do is I do websites, I do SEO, I help people with any kind of computer problems they have. My website is roselle.mousehelp.com or you can go to mousehelp.com or you can go to mousehelp.org or you can go to roselle.net and see my blog. Anyway, <laughs> I do all this social media blogging and computer stuff and I'm totally into communications and mostly writing and public speaking. 
So I, I think those ones. the easiest one to remember will be mousehelp.com. <laughs> mousehelp.com will certainly get you started. Yeah. Okay, Brian. Well, thank you for joining us in. What are you What are you using right now? If you don't mind my asking, are you on a laptop now, or are you still on your phone? Yeah, no, I'm on my laptop. I'm connected to the guest wireless at Tori Nissan, which just kind of dropped me for a few minutes a few minutes ago. So I, I'm back. Well, I'm surprised it's actually working as well as it is, and that's good because when you were on your phone, you couldn't see any of the controls, could you? On your phone, just right, on your laptop. I, I, Right. Oh, well, you're muted again. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you for joining me. Aaron Weathers says he's developing a network for 3D modeling applications and services. Ooh, very cool. And his website is caadengine.com. That would be caadengine.com. C-A-A-D-engine.com. Thank you. Can you all put that in the chat? I'm sorry, Can Brian. Put that, put that URL in the chat for me, please. Okay, it is. It's there. Okay, I think you're you're hearing me better than I'm hearing you. So okay. That's a good thing. It's in the it's in the chat, Brian. <laughs> I got it. Thank you. Okay.